Hey YouTube, today I'm back in the garage and I want to talk a little bit about tuning your GMRS or UHF antenna. I want to go over some of the uh, reasons why you want to be sure that you tune your antenna, what will happen if you don't, some of the things that tuning does and doesn't do and answer a couple of common questions. I'm also going to show you what tools you need to tune an antenna and uh, go over all the basic steps. So what is tuning your antenna? Tuning is basically making sure that the length of your antenna matches the frequencies that you're transmitting on. There's a lot of complicated reasons and math behind that, but basically, if the antenna isn't the right length, it won't be tuned and it won't be as effective or efficient as a properly tuned antenna. And basically, tuning is just cutting or lengthening the antenna so that it matches the frequencies that you're using. Now, in the olden days, when we had CB radios, some of the antennas, like a fire stick, had a nifty little feature on top for tuning, which was a screw that you could screw up and down to tune the antenna. And when you do that, that is lengthening or shortening the antenna until you get the right SWR based on the frequencies that you're transmitting on. Now, a UHF antenna, most UHF antennas or GMRS antennas, don't have that nifty little feature that lets you easily lengthen and shorten the antenna. Most of them have a little bit of give in the base that will allow you to move it up and down and increase or decrease the electrical length a little bit, but most of them you have to trim quite a bit from when you take it out of the package to make sure that it's properly tuned. Now, if your antenna isn't tuned properly, it's gonna result in a high SWR, and SWR is standing wave ratio. What that means is it's a measurement of how much of the transmitting power is going out of the antenna compared to how much is being reflected or bouncing back into the radio. A perfect SWR of 1.1 to 1 means basically all of the energy is going out of the antenna the way you want it, and none of the energy is going back into the radio. If you have a high SWR, that means a larger percentage of the wattage that you're transmitting isn't getting out of the antenna and going into the air, it's coming back down through your cable into your radio. So not only does that mean that the energy that should be going out for people to hear you isn't going out, when it's reflected back in, that causes heat. And that heat builds up in the amplifier of your radio and it can eventually burn it out. So the goal of tuning the antenna is to get that SWR as low as possible so that when you talk, you've got as much energy going out of the antenna as possible and as little bouncing back into the radio as possible. I've heard people say that they need to tune the SWR on their antenna because they sounded scratchy in the microphone or because the volume was too low. That's not how it works. Adjusting the SWR only affects the amount of energy being radiated out of the antenna it doesn't affect how you sound, it doesn't affect how much or how well you receive on the antenna, it only affects the transmission power and the ratio of power going out versus coming in. So what is good SWR, what is bad SWR? Most manufacturers of radios want you to have an SWR of 1.5 to 1 or lower. 1.5 is pretty good, 1.1 or 1.0 would be perfect. When you get up to 2.0 or 2.5, that's getting in the not good range. 3.0 or higher is, is a bad SWR. Once you hit an SWR of 4 or 5, you don't even want to transmit because at that point, so much of the energy is being reflected back into the radio that you really can begin to do some damage to the radio. All right, so how do you tune the antenna? Basically, you're going to be cutting your antenna, shortening the length of it. And to do that, you're going to need some tools. First, you're going to need some eye protection. It's best if you have eye protection that makes you look cool when wearing it. It's really important that you have eye protection because when you trim the antenna and cut off little bits of it, the little bits tend to jump off like when you're clipping your toenails and they seem to have an infinity for my eyeballs at least. You're going to need a little Allen wrench. This should come with your antenna and you're going to use that to uh, loosen the little uh, mini bolts that uh, hold the antenna in the base. You're going to need an SWR meter. This one I got off of Amazon. It was about 35 bucks. It's super easy to use. It's digital. You don't have to do the calibration or anything like what you would have to do on an old fashioned CB type SWR meter. You cannot use your CB SWR meter because CB frequencies are so much lower than the higher frequencies that we use on GMRS that it just won't work. There's a link down below to this SWR meter. It's one that I use. It comes with the fittings that you need to connect to just about any uh, antenna setup that you have. That is a uh, affiliate link. So if you click on that link and then buy something, I get credit for that sale. So thank you very much. 
and you're going to need something to cut the antenna with. Even though they don't look like it, these antennas are really strong. They're uh, made out of stainless steel and uh, they're small, but they're super hard. So you could try something like uh, just some wire cutters, but honestly, um, you're just going to, that's not going to work. You could use a small uh, hacksaw with a fine tooth blade that would cut through it relatively easily. What I use, which makes it really quick and easy, is some little small uh, bolt cutters. And you're also going to need a vise or something to hold it with. That just makes it easier to hold so I don't have to try to hold the antenna with my teeth while I'm cutting it. So the first step really is getting the instructions that came with your antenna, finding them, digging them out of the trash, and actually reading them. That's a really important step because most antennas, we've bought a couple of them, and they all came with instructions telling me exactly how and where to cut and trim the antenna. With a single piece antenna like this tram, it's fairly straightforward. But with a multi-section like the Browning, uh, the instructions say that you need to cut the bottom portion, don't cut the top portion. I don't know if it matters, but that's what the instructions say. Instructions will also tell you how long the antenna should be for a given frequency or how much you need to trim off. So that's the most important thing because that's going to give you a starting point of how much you're going to need to trim off of the antenna. One minor detail about trimming the antenna is once you shorten it, obviously you cannot lengthen it. So if you go too short, that antenna is pretty much destroyed or you will never, depending on how short you go, if you go past the resonant frequency, the SWR is going to shoot up too high. So you have to be very careful about how much to cut off and cutting only small little bits off at a time. Now, ideally, in a perfect world, it's best if you do your measuring for the SWR outside in an open field. The experts say you must do it that way. I say that's BS. You don't have to. You can if you are able to. If you have an open field in your backyard, great. Go out there and do it. I've tuned every one of my antennas in the garage. And then after tuning them as best as I could, or at least the first one, I took it out to an open field and measured it, and it was the exact same. So in my case, in my garage, whether I tuned it out in an open field near the house, inside the house, with anything nearby, really didn't matter. If you can't get out into an open field or away from the house or out of the garage, don't worry about it. Now, because the instructions that you didn't throw away will tell you pretty much how much you will need to trim off the antenna for the frequency range that you're using, you don't need to do it the way you might have done it on a CB where you go to channel one and measure and then channel two and measure and then figure out if you need to shorten it or lengthen it. We're basically going to be shortening it until we get to the lowest SWR that we can reach. What you want to do when you make your initial cut is you want to cut it long. You want to, you want to be sure that you don't undercut it so you can make a, a longer cut close to it, measure your SWR, and then slowly bit by bit take more and more off. You're going to take a little bit off. You're going to go and measure it. Put it back on the radio and measure it and take a little bit more off measure it again until you get down to that perfect hopefully swr okay so the first thing we're going to do is attach our swr meter we're going to disconnect the radio antenna from the back i'm going to plug the end that says transmit tx into where the antenna was on the radio. Screw that in nice and tight. And then I'm going to attach the antenna wire to the upper part that says antenna. But now that we have the SWR meter connected, we're going to turn it on. Okay, so we've got it on. And basically, we're going to put it on our middle or common frequency. I'm going to switch it to low power. And I'm going to key up, and we're going to take a reading. Ooh, 1.83 to 1. 1.82 to 1. That's a little bit high, so we'll want to go and do some trimming to it, and then come back and see how it looks. You put on your cool looking eye protection and you put the antenna in your vise or your teeth. You get your cutters and you start cutting. And you're only going to cut tiny little sections out. You probably can't even see that section that I just cut. This is 
half a centimeter or less. Uh, on UHF frequencies, which is where GMRS runs, one tiny little couple of millimeters can make a huge difference and cutting it just a tiny bit too short can make a huge impact. So you're gonna go bit by bit, cutting, measuring, cutting, measuring, until you get down to that as close to one or 1.5 SWR that you can get. All right, we trim off a few centimeters and then we try it again. 1.58 to one, that's a little bit better. 1.48 to 1. Right, 1 1.46 to 1, not too bad. Really that's all there is to it. Measure, cut, measure, cut until the SWR is as low as you can get it. Now if you've done everything right and you're still getting a high SWR, and by high I mean one and a half to two or higher, you're certain that you've cut the length correct and it's still too high, then you may want to check things like your coax cable. You want to make sure there's no coils in it. You want to make sure there's no sharp bends in the coax. That's not good for it. You want to make sure that your antenna is properly grounded on your mount. There's a whole lot of additional troubleshooting that you may have to go through if you can't get the SWR down low enough because that means there's something else wrong. So you've got to start eliminating potential causes, grounding, bad cable, that sort of thing. There's entire videos that you can find on YouTube just on troubleshooting that sort of issues. But if you've got no cable problems, the antenna's properly grounded, there's no other issues, you should be able to trim that antenna down to a 1.1 or near perfect SWR. Okay, I know that was kind of a quick overview of a very complicated subject, but I wanted to keep this video short so that you wouldn't get bored watching it. If you have any questions, Leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you on the trail.